The Obama campaign mobilized one of the largest grassroots movements for a presidential candidate in recent history. Barack Obama became a global icon symbolizing people's hope for change. The San Francisco Bay Area was a hub of support for Obama during election time. Now two years into his presidency, media roots set out to see if people are tuned into their favorite candidate's actions and if his actions warrant their support. What do you think about the transference of administrations into the Obama administration? Do you support the Obama administration? Yes, I love Obama. And the transition was surprisingly good. I mean, Bush showed him what was really up and he seemed to handle it very well and just moved right in and did start to try to do what he wanted to do. What exactly has he done that you are kind of behind right now? Uh, the health policy, you know, health care. We needed it. That's why people voted him in. So he did it. I want a healthy, educated America. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I do support Obama. I think they need, they need to, people need to be more patient about whatever that decision that is made. I like Obama. But then, of course, I would. I mean, you know, you, like, you either like people or you don't like him. Of course, I like Obama for a lot of different reasons. Sure, the main one being that he's black and he's really intelligent and he's the president of the United States, which is amazing. I feel he most definitely could make a change if you want to make a change, you know what I'm saying? But like you say, it's going to take time and, you know, time on your hands. So a lot of people will put that over your head like, oh, they're expecting a change real fast. But if everybody understand it, take time and everybody try, it could be a change, you know what I'm saying? Obama has gotten a lot of criticism for things that weren't really his fault, like he stepped into all the problems that were there from the Bush administration. I do definitely support him. I think he's a good president and um, I know it's going to take a little more than a year, two years to fix everything that's going on in the economy. So. But I like Obama's agenda. I like the coalition that he put together. It was something new, something innovative. And like I said, he drew on the best of all of America. It was a really beautiful coalition and everybody had a voice. And you, you got to respect that. And I really had to respect that. You know, I just don't understand a lot of this, frankly. You know, so it's I think he's more than a cent more of a centrist mm -hmm. than I had anticipated. I was crazy about Obama when he went into office, and I want to continue to believe in him. You know, I really want to continue to believe in him. Uh, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes, you know, these things happen, and I think, come on, man, what are you doing? You, what happened to you? From Finland, uh, what did you think of the Bush administration when he was? president here? Well, we hated him. <laughs> we thought that it's like it puts the end to the stupid America. And what do you think um, from a standpoint of now living here and also what does your family think about the Obama administration? We love it. Do you? Yeah. What, what specifically do you think is, is changed for the better? Uh, well, first of all, democratics. I mean, in Europe we consider it, it puts, you know, USA back on track. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he's doing a pretty good job so far. And, uh, the way he's handling uh, situations over in uh, Afghanistan and with the oil, big oil leak out in the uh, Gulf Coast. I think he's doing a wonderful job. What else do you think Obama's doing that, um, that you're supporting right now? Uh, I really can't think of anything right at this moment. There have been a series of accomplishments and um, it's, it's hard at the moment for me to name them all, but um, uh, that I think he has done a few of the things he said he was going to do. It's a new beginning, to tell you the truth. You know, first black man in office, become president of the United States. And um, right now I vote for him again. It'll be okay, you know, give him four more years, see how he does. So you would support voting for him in a second term if things are kind of still the same as they are right now? Well, no. <laughs> I would, uh, I would vote for him again because I do see that, you know, he held the line. Things didn't get any worse. He and his family represent not only sort of a cultural shift in being able to elect uh, people of color into the White House, but um, they are healthy people. They represent a model of how human beings are supposed to be. And I think that's going to have some deep effects just as the fact that we have a person of color as the president. It's going to have some deep effects that are going to go much deeper than the policies of today, tomorrow, or next week or next year. Yeah, I don't think much has changed, really. No. So uh, you said that there are a lot of Obama shirts being sold during the election? Yeah, while he was running there, we were selling about average 10 to 15 shirts a day. Oh, wow. And those were our best sellers. So 
we didn't sell anything uh, in the store except for those. Majority of the stuff, the money that we made was off the Obama shirts. So we would make rent off those shirts. It's become a capitalistic democracy where whatever sells is whatever gets voted for. You know? Yeah, I mean, Obama did have a, a good ad campaign going. And that's, that's why I won. But I still peop see people like buying Obama shirts. Right. It's really, I think it's really strange. Like, when does that happen? When a government <laughs> official is already elected and it's like trendy to have his face on your shirt. That's kind of disgusting. I do know that he is trying. That's what I do know. But as far as this war thing, oh my God. I don't, it's all politics, so. We're kind of waiting for some more, more actions with the economy, you know, to what get. What about the wars? Okay, I mean, he's all that talk, but still all those soldiers. Mm -hmm. And what's happening in Afghanistan, I think that's kind of, you know, alarming. What do you think about the, his foreign policy in terms of expanding the Afghanistan war? He just added 70,000 troops this year and last. I don't, I don't feel like I'm qualified to answer that question. I don't think many people are. There's just too many intricate deca details about the dynamics that we as the public, all we know is what the press tells us. And it comes down to a measure of trust. Do you trust that your commander in chief is making the right choices for our national security? And I do trust him. What do you think about the expansion of the Afghanistan war? Do you think that that's a war of necessity? Yes, I do. I think we need to, well, not only find Taliban and uh, terrorists everywhere, and we have a good enough intelligence agency and around the world kind of intelligence that we could narrow it down and just get those that are just totally radical and religious fanatics and take care of them. And Afghanistan, if we are strong there, then people will see us as strong again. Well, there was maybe too much expectation from Obama. And I think maybe he has delivered on some of the health care, but, um, but certainly not on foreign policy. Well, I've heard there are more drone attacks in Pakistan now than there were. When is it his problem? You know, when, when does Obama inherit these wars um, that he is actually expanding? Well, I was definitely most disappointed by the way he's handled the wars. Um, and also a lot of promises he made about Guantanamo that never really came through that um, he had made the first day he was in office. Afghanistan is continuing to go downhill. I mean, every single kid that is lost over there, I just don't think it's worth it. The executive power issue, the way the Bush administration took over a lot of powers uh, is very disturbing and unfortunately the Obama administration has carried through on too many of those things and been too cavalier with our civil liberties and that I'd like to see changed. I don't know, I mean he, his whole focus was the, the health initiative, you know, and that, that happened, you know, and it's a little... Are you, are you satisfied with the, with the no, outcome? But I mean it's better than it not having happened, I feel like. When I saw that, that administration, when they had, you know, his announcement and you saw how many people were there? Endless, right, and right. I thought, my God, we finally got you know, to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> we were betrayed, we were betrayed. I flipped out. I mean, I told yeah. you, I had a I'd sleeping pill and a half a glass, of, half a bottle of wine. I got a crash. When he got elected, I was really, really huge behind him. Um, to me, I haven't seen much change. So for me, I, I find it kind of surprising that he's having m more support as of late. I think there's potential for change, but I think there's going to take a paradigm shift to get this fucked up system working better and getting people not jaded about their government and actually happy about what is going on. You can't really blame your leaders because the people don't care enough to even react to them. And so at this point, it's like, if we did think up the next great rallying cry, I don't think anyone would really get behind it, you know? Like, the, on campus, when they're, the only thing that anyone showed up to was about the money, you know? Like, the war protest, there were like four people there, and like, the guy with the microphone sounded like he was gonna cry. But like, when it was money, there were 5,000 people marching down the street, you know? If you want to change the system, you have to look at the roots of it and not look at who's the um, person in charge. And in fact, having a black president was a, um, something that a lot of people got sucked into thinking this was going to change things, but it really hasn't. In some ways, because Obama's doing it, people um, are going along with things and thinking, oh, you know, he, he, can't have any, he doesn't have any choice. Maybe there'll be more realistic conversations about realities instead of 
you know, taking the White House and what? What did he do? He just went right back to policy. I wish we could get enough people to understand our view, point of view, but, but there isn't. I mean, that's the whole thing that's crazy. Not enough people believe that a guy like Nader can do something, and yet, if you look at the alternative, he's the only one that could do anything. I think a lot of people are t hesitant to leave the two-party system after what happened with Nader and Bush and all that, and so I think people are afraid to vote of for other parties. Would you guys still consider voting for him? If, if nothing was indeed, you would still vote for him? What if nothing still had changed more so than it has right now? Well, it depends who the other evil was. <laughs> it's the same old corrupt system, seems like, just a new face. Um, I think the two-party system is horrible. I think it just leads to more corruption. It leads to more um, corporations having control. It's all about, you know, whoever can put together the, the biggest campaign backed by the biggest bucks is going to win. Why, what do you think um, is due to this just unwavering support? I see a lot of, a lot of people wearing, sporting Obama shirts, um, sporting the bumper stickers, and I'm just wondering, well, what do you Americans think? Americans seem to be slow to grasp reality. And the reality is that Obama has lived up to a few of his campaign promises. The wars are expanding. The U.S. bases are still overseas. He might be withdrawing some troops from Iraq, but there's been no word on the private contractors, nor the private contractors in Afghanistan or anywhere else the U.S. has occupied, wants to occupy, or wishes to occupy. And one, one person isn't going to change. One you know puppet head in office isn't going to change. It's going to have to come from people knowing and getting involved and making educated decisions about, uh, about things that are going on and, and going out and voted, voting with an educated stance, not just with the popular vote or with whatever t-shirts are selling at t-shirt orgy, you know? You, you people are young and you still have idealism. You have hope and, and you, know, you think things can be changed from deep down and I admire that. <laughs> How does a realist change the system? I mean, I mean if, if, if that's what it is to be a realist then it sounds like we've got a pretty, a pretty hard course ahead and is this just a matter of hoping that one day someone comes along that isn't accepting corporate money, that isn't you know, promoting this system. I mean, it seems like no, nobody can be president that isn't feeding into the current system that is completely broken. What we hope <laughs> is people like you get it started. I don't see hope with any mainstream politician. I voted for McKinney. Um, she was an amazing woman. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what would you say to people who, who say that that's wasting a vote? And they say, you know, well, don't throw your vote away. Say it's a wasted vote to vote for a Republican or a Democrat because all you're getting is more of the same thing with a different name. So to me, that's wasting my vote.